In this video, I want to summarize what we've learned about the empirical distribution and try to get you to see datasets and distributions in a new way. First, let's recap the idea of empirical distribution. Pause the video and have a read. If you have a data set and you pick one of the items at random, all items equally likely, and call this random item x star, then this is called the empirical distribution. It's a discrete random variable, of course, because there are only n possible values it can take, fewer if the data set has duplicates, and the probability mass function is just this formula here. If there are no duplicates, then every value has probability 1 on n. If there are duplicates, then the probability is multiplied up appropriately. I've written this out here in general form. This form works whatever the type of your data set, whether it's numbers or strings or whatever you like. We can't talk about cumulative distribution functions for arbitrary types, only for numbers, which is why I've written out this as a statement about the likelihood, i.e. the property mass function, rather than as a statement about the cumulative distribution function. In the last video, we saw that the empirical distribution is a perfect fit for a data set. If all we're after is a probability model that matches our data set as closely as possible, this is it. But the empirical distribution actually also has close links with some topics from earlier videos. Let's think back to Monte Carlo approximation, and let's see if the idea of empirical distributions gives us any new perspective. Monte Carlo is a procedure for approximating an integral using a random sample. Here's the formula from section 5.1. It says, if we want to find the expected value of some function h of x, where x is a random variable, then we can take a sample of values from x and find the average of h applied to those samples. Let me rewrite this. The Monte Carlo approximation, the expression on the right, is the sum over all x values in the sample we took of h of x times the likelihood for x star of x. If the sampled values are distinct, then the likelihood is just 1 on n for all of them, and if there are duplicates, then it's easy to see that this formula does the right thing. But this formula is just another way of writing an expectation for a discrete random variable. It's the expected value of h of x star. So what we're really saying is that we can approximate a random variable x by the empirical distribution x star. This approximation works for any readout function h, so that's not the important thing here. What's important is what we're approximating. So don't read Monte Carlo as just a way to approximate an integral. Read it as a way to approximate the random variable x itself. The message here is, why bother trying to do exact probability calculations with random variables when it's perfectly easy to get an approximating random variable and to do the calculations with this approximation? There's one last nifty thing about empirical distributions that is worth seeing. Here's a basic calculation. Let x star be the empirical distribution of a data set. This question asks us, What's the expected value of x star and the variance? Obviously, this only works for numerical data sets. Okay, let's just write out the definition of expectation. Actually, on second thoughts, let's write it out another way. We know that x star can be generated by first picking a random index k and then returning the kth item in the data set. So we can write the expectation as a sum over k rather than over x. This is actually an application of the law of the unconscious statistician. x star can be thought of as a function of k, so we can write its expectation in two ways, either summing over x or summing over k. And, obviously, what we just found is the sample mean. Likewise, the variance of x star turns out to be just the sample variance using the same trick. Let me rephrase this. If you're given a data set and someone asks you to compute its variance, you should technically speaking say, hey, that's a stupid thing to ask. The word variance is only defined for random variables, and there's no such thing as the variance of a list. 
Or if you're being helpful, you can say, oh, you mean the variance of the empirical distribution of the data set, and then everyone's happy. So whenever you're computing statistics from a data set, what you're really doing is computing statistics for a random variable, namely the empirical distribution of that data set. This is the big takeaway. A data set is a probability distribution. Whenever you're doing any probabilistic thinking at all and you need a random variable, you can just drop in a data set instead and everything will still make sense. Keep this in the back of your mind for now. We're not going to use it for the next few videos, but it will turn out to be a lovely little trick to drop into some tricky modelling questions. And much more than that, it's the idea behind holdout set validation, which is the cornerstone of machine learning.